Now after driving around for a while, it looks like it may have an exhaust leak. You can see the, the sooty deposit on the underside of the bonnet. Uh, so I'm going to take the intake manifold off and down to the heat shield. And it's already got the air cleaners and the velocity stacks off. So I'm just going to loosen the four bolts that hold the carburetors. And I'm going to try and slide the whole thing back in one piece so I don't have to disconnect any of the cables or hoses or whatever, other than the, uh, the uh, PCV uh, pipe uh, that goes into here. So just put that off to the side. I'll loosen those four bolts off and uh, pull that away and then see what I can see underneath there. I suspect that the flange between the exhaust pipe and the manifold may not be seating properly, but uh, we'll find out in a few minutes. So as I suspected, there is a leak at the clamp here. You can see it's blowing up here and there's all kinds of soot in that on the back of the heat shield and I'll clean that all off. I've managed to get this um, just hold off to the side so I don't have to disconnect any of the cables or hoses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clamp off, uh, move it around, and see if we can get a better seal on that. Okay, I have uh, I've reclamped the exhaust downpipe to the manifold. And what I did is uh, the steady bracket, which lines up with the back of the engine, um, I loosened that bracket off so it gave the pipe a bit of wiggle room and that uh, hopefully has allowed me to clamp that up a bit tighter. And there's the clamp that goes around the pipe and mounts the front face of this bracket. So that way the, the exhaust pipe is kept fixed relative to the engine, which helps that uh, old style clamp on the pipe to the manifold work a lot better. So I'll uh, put this all back together and see if it makes a difference. And I'll clean off what I can on the uh, on the bonnet here as well and on the exhaust manifold or the intake manifold. Well I have everything back together. I've taken the car out for a test run. Uh, cleaned a little bit off the underside of the bonnet. I'm not quite not to figure out what that little spot is for. I think it lines up over top of the generator, but uh, that'll be a little bit later. Uh, but for now, I'm really happy. The exhaust is sealed up down here, and so we're ready to move on uh, to the next project. Well, I've been thoroughly enjoying the car over the last little while here, and I've put close to 700 miles on it since the middle of July. It's now the middle of October. So one of the things I need to do now is uh, change the oil, uh, double check all the other fluids. I'm going to adjust the rear brakes. But I still have a few nice days. I'm going to be able to drive the car uh, before the snow sets in. Uh, so I want to have it uh, basically good and ready uh, to put up for the winter. And there's a few other things that uh, will get addressed. And one of those uh, you've already seen with the fixing the exhaust leak at the manifold. So I'm just going to check all the fluids, change the, uh, the engine oil. I might even change the rear axle oil, mostly because the, the car had been sitting for an, quite a number of years with the old oil in there. Uh, it's not making any noises or anything that it should or shouldn't. Uh, there are a couple of little noises at the front I want to see if I can figure out the source of. But other than that, I'm very happy with how the cars run. So I'm going to get the front of the car up on jack stands. I'll actually actually run it for a little bit to warm it up. And I don't know if you heard that or not, but that was a squirrel running across the roof of the, the uh, garage. Anyway, I'm going to warm up the engine. Uh, just get the oil circulating and that, and do a proper oil change. And as you will have seen in one of my much earlier videos on the uh, engine, uh, it's kind of hard to see right now, but I do have a spin-on filter conversion kit uh, installed on the car, which will make things a lot cleaner and a lot easier to, to do the job. Well, here's a bit of a tip for jacking up the front of your car or your bug eye. Uh, this is a box section that goes across between the frame rails, and temptation is just to jack up in the middle of that. And that's not really recommended, otherwise you'll just dent the bottom of it and possibly put a hole in it. 
So what I've done here, and is what's recommended, is use a piece of wood that goes from frame rail to frame rail, and use that uh, to jack the front of the car up. And then I've got the jack stands um, are just going to be underneath where the sway bar would mount, and that way I know the car is really secure and is not going to go anywhere it's not supposed to. Okay, we have the oil drained. I have the new uh, filter in place. You can see just down here. Uh, plug back in. Uh, I haven't put the oil in just yet. But uh, in keeping with the Econo side of the garage, I do all my own oil changes on all our vehicles. And uh, this time is my oil drain pan, and I have a like a five gallon bucket. I put the old filters and the oil in there. And then in Calgary, you can go to the landfill sites and they have a free drop off uh, for this kind of stuff. So I can take all of the empty uh, cans, uh, oil bottles, all that kind of stuff up to the dump or to the landfill and uh, just drop it off there at no charge. It does take some time, obviously. So this way I can uh, keep my costs down and it takes me an hour or so to go to the nearest landfill and, and drop this off. Or I put the bucket itself inside a garbage bag and then secure it in, in the back of whatever vehicle I'm taking. I won't be taking the bug eye to do that, of course. Yeah, so that's that's how I save money on oil changes. So also I look for oil on sale for any of our vehicles and same for filters and just buy that at the best price I can. And that helps me save money um, in the long run. So I'm gonna take the time now to run all this stuff up to the landfill. Um, as you can see, we also do our own winter tire changes to save some money there. Uh, so we'll get the back of the car opened up. And we'll get everything loaded in. So here we go. Here's at the dump site. Just dump all the oil there. Paint cans and stuff go down in there. Any antifreeze uh, goes up in here. And all the old oil containers will just go in this bucket right here. And so I've got that all done. I'm just going to head out, and again, that, uh, and all that's for no charge. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to share it with your friends. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget that little bell icon. Click on that, and you'll get notified when the next video comes out. And that next video will be out in a couple of weeks. If you'd like to get a hold of me directly, you can do so at the email address I'll put at the bottom of the screen, and that will also be in the description below. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage, and we'll see you next time. Me, me.